365 is on the road here in Las Vegas at AWS reInvent 2024. And it should not come as any surprise. The topic is AI, the multiple ways to implement AI, the different building blocks. Dan, we've pretty much seen it all so far. Yeah, the event's been great. Uh, we've seen multiple keynotes now. We've had the chance to spend quite a bit of time with the executives, partners, customers, and of course, I mean, the, the floor is always, the energy is incredible, right. especially as you're moving between location and location. Yeah. This thing's like the size of CES now. And I think that's a, that's pretty indicative, Pat, of just how significant the sprawl of AWS and its ecosystem has become. It's it's moving really quick. And one of the things I love to do on the show, and I know you love to, and our audience loves it too, is I call it the grand purifier, which is to actually have people who are using the technology uh, up on up on stage, up on the virtual stage, in addition uh, to the vendors. But we're even doing one better here, right? We have a partner, uh, we have AWS, and we have a customer here. Uh, we have AWS, Toyota, and Deloitte. Mm -hmm. Guys, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Us. Yeah, it's a lot of fun to have you all here. And, to be here. And and what Pat said is absolutely true. I think we all we all sort of know. Customers, it's it's the fire hose. Of course, AWS, there's there it, you have your own fire hose. I mean, in terms of how much <laughs> you guys put out feature-wise, I'm sure all of you have have, have enjoyed that. Uh, it's kind of being a good victim in these cases. Well, it's great. Too it's much technology. It's, it's opportunity much. for the partners and hopefully solving problems for too, the customer. Too much. Uh, but having said that, at the same time, you know, I think all of you like to see your peers. You like to hear, you know, hey, what are the others in our industry doing? What are our partners, vendors, suppliers? What are they doing? And then, of course. You know, as the integrators and consultants, uh, I think you're really supposed to bring that 360 degree view, put it all together. So, you know, I'd like to hear from all of you. I mean, Karthik, it is your show, it is AWS. So we will you give you the, the honors of going first. I'd love to hear kind of just what you're seeing in terms of Gen AI. You know, it's been a big couple of years. You know, how is it impacting your customers and of course their, their buying decisions? Absolutely. I think the proliferation of Gen AI has uh, created a massive shift in industries. Um, while we continue to hear from customers about how they can leverage AWS Cloud to lower their costs or eliminate tech debt, we are also increasingly hearing about how they can embrace Gen AI to drive more innovation and sort of reinvent themselves yeah. and drive more business value for themselves and their customers. Which is why over the last year we've announced a wave of services and new capabilities related to Gen AI for uh, Amazon Bedrock, Amazon SageMaker, and Amazon Q. And we've also partnered with uh, Deloitte in making sure that customers can embrace those Gen AI innovations in building those solutions. Um, as I see it, Gen AI is no longer a boardroom conversation, but line of business users are building Gen AI applications for various different use cases in industries that they operate in. Yeah, so uh, mentioned Deloitte. I mean, generative AI is tough. As much as you know, we we see the big tent event and the presentations. This stuff is is tough. Of course, you know that. You know, being at Toyota, but you know, Deloitte, you're you're out there to help people and uh, clients do this. I'm curious. Um, how do you work with AWS on, I'll say specifically POCs, generative AI POCs? Is there a playbook you use? So, as you know, Deloitte and AWS share more than a decade of relationship. And over the years, we have jointly built many solutions, right? Industry specific solutions. And within internally, Deloitte internally, we built numerous accelerators depending on a client problem, and we use those accelerators to accelerate adoption of any technology or any of solving any business problem, right? So recently, we've signed a, a strategic collaboration agreement with AWS. It's a multi-year agreement right. where uh, AWS and Deloitte jointly invest to help customers not only do pilots, but move those pilots into production because Pilots, we've done pilots, significant number of pilots in the past two to three years, but the percentage of pilots going into production has been only 30% up until now, 20 to 30%, right? And there's many, many reasons why. So, so we're using our joint collaboration or alliance to really help customers 
understand the business value of a specific problem, how it can be solved leveraging Gen AI, and using some investments and the deep technology expertise and the services that uh, AWS has to offer, combined, we are helping, working with the customers to move those POCs into production. And Phil, you are the customer <laughs> on this panel. <laughs> so let's, let's, put, let's bring this to life. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, we're seeing all this in, uh, excitement on the technology. Yeah. Both Pat and I you know, have been observing the, the evolution of, of AI, Gen AI in the clouds. And I think we've both seen the acceleration. And we're moving to this era from kind of how cool could this be to very practical. How does this help our business grow? How do we get more efficient? So share a little bit with us you know, how you're thinking yeah. about within Toyota, Gen AI as a strategic imperative. Yeah, so you know, our, our supply chain transformation sponsor likes to often say, you know, you gotta really make it easy for customers to do business with us. And that is really sticks with us as a it's an ultimate kind of North Star. And in doing that, if you think about it, when a customer comes online or into our dealerships, you know, they expect or you know, shopping or buying or servicing, they expect to get the information that they need when they want it when they need it. And in order for us to do that, we have to really deliver that in a seamless way. So we also found out in trying to, let's say, achieve that North Star, we had to kind of turn that inward to ourselves. It can't just be about outward. We had to fix our, uh, make it easy to do business with ourselves internally. So it's really shifted the way that we think about the technology and how we're going to drive these seamless experiences, both externally and internally to our enterprise as well. So, so just a quick follow up. Mm -hmm. You know, what is the biggest challenge for you in the supply chain, though? And because and, obviously, you know, you're yeah. looking at that. That's your yeah, yeah. So, in that, there's a lot of expectations in that. You know, that that customer uh, that customer experience in terms again, like having the vehicle or just when am I going to get my fulfillment of the vehicle? So, being able to hit that customer expectation that Nirvana every single time with uh, you know, with remarkable consistency throughout. That's that's what the challenge is. You know, you can, and everybody can, anybody can get lucky. But to be able to use our Toyota, uh, Toyota values, our Toyota production system, and th in that way of thinking to drive that that same type of consistency throughout. That's that's what's meaningful to us. So, Kartik, I've been uh, following AWS since you were invented. I think 17 years ago. I think it was the simple queuing service. It was the first service out there, and boy, have you evolved uh, since then. It's pretty awesome. But uh, one of the things that I, I've always noted is this customer obsession. I know everybody says, it's, every, every company says they are, but I truly believe that you are. Um, and as an analyst, I need to watch the absolutes that I use, but I, but I do believe that. Uh, you made hundreds of generative AI announcements, and all of those are investments that you had to you know, put on your six-page memos and, and figure out what you invest in. Um, can you talk about what some of the biggest investments are? But I want to make sure, though, you also talk about SageMaker and yeah. talk about the problems that it's helping to solve. It's really second or third generation of SageMaker, a lot of improvements. Absolutely. Um, like you said, over the last year and even yesterday, you would have heard a lot of announcements from Matt about our generative AI announcements. And today with Swami's keynote in the morning, um, centered around Amazon Q, Amazon Bedrock, and Amazon SageMaker, um, many of these capabilities are helping customers reinvent themselves and sort of embrace the Gen AI innovation. Uh, just to name a few, they've been ton of innovations that's, that's, com that's been coming out. Um, when you look at Amazon Q, for example, uh, with Q Developer, uh, we have agentic systems that um, help developers not only generate code, but also help them with um, generating test cases, right. generating code documentation, and also with code reviews, covering the entire spectrum of, of their developer workflows. Uh, with Amazon Bedrock, we recently announced the Bedrock Marketplace, which has over 100 plus cost efficient task specific models that customers can use and fine tune those models specific to, to their use cases. Last but not least, uh, with Amazon SageMaker, we've been making a lot of investments sure. with the new SageMaker, 
uh, we've evolved SageMaker to cover not just AI, but data analytics and AI, bringing the best experiences of EMR, Glue, Redshift, Bedrock, and of course, SageMaker right. Studio. Um, there have been innovations in SageMaker around task governance, so customers can um, maximize their utilization of compute instances and assign it for tasks like training and inference and so on. Um, finally, we also have the SageMaker partner AI ads, so customers and partners mm -hmm. can not only discover, but publish and use those applications so it's seamless with, with the SageMaker AI. Um, Net net, I would look at these as um, innovations that uh, help at the infrastructure level for SageMakers that customers can use and build better Gen AI applications. You've been busy. <laughs> <laughs> I just love like really hearing and seeing a lot of attention to SageMaker because I think that was such a core part of the multi-year AI investment that to some extent, I think it is, doesn't always get enough credit for during this transition, but Sage, I mean, it really was the OG. Well, it's, I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, it's how they brought in, they've got the most amount of machine learning uh, customers out there. And by the way, adding the data, data capabilities to it, uh, I was asking about that, I think last year, and, and you did it, and I think it's great. And because it's, of you. It, well, uh, just because <laughs> of me. Because you were asked, because they always listen to <laughs> no, they, it. They, his team read my session. team's analysis, and he, they just jumped right on it. I love that. Yeah. I love when things work out. Chris, I, I, I want to bounce one your way. Um, you were talking earlier about joint solutions and how you sort of mm -hmm. work together. Can you talk a little bit about what you're doing there and how that, how that works, how that materializes, how that matures? Yeah, so, so I'll, I'll give you a specific example, right? Uh, something similar uh, to what we're doing currently at uh, Toyota, right? Like, like um, Phil was mentioning, his big, biggest challenge was getting, or what he focuses on the most is getting the right car at the right time to, at the right place to the right person, right? So it's easier said than done. There's, when Toyota embarked on this large supply chain transformation journey, it's, these are, the legacy systems were 30 years old, right? And the transformation is not only a tech debt reduction, but they also wanted to do a transformation of the entire the way they do supply chain, right? So as part of this transformation, they've um, looked at, I mean, it's, it's a product-driven transformation where a couple of dozen data products combined working in harmony, collaborating, is, is what's gonna provide this new supply chain of the future. So we had the opportunity to partner, with, to, to work with Toyota in helping them shape a couple of those products. One such product is the demand forecasting and order recommendation engine, right? This demand forecasting engine, this is, Toyota has a few, hundreds of um, vehicles, um, hundreds of configurations, thousands of configurations. Thousands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. Thousands of configurations and every configuration would have a demand associated with it because the way it works is Toyota sells to, uh, gives, gives to regions, regions sell, give it to the dealers, dealers sell the cars, right? So the demand comes, demand signals come from dealers to regions to back to Toyota. And now one model doesn't fit all of those 400,000 different configurations or 200,000 different configurations so we had to build multiple different machine learning models, number one, to, to forecast the demand and then optimize those models to generate uh, what is that make model series that each of these regions and dealers should be selling, which would, one, meet the customer's needs, number one, and improve the customer experience. Right. Two, improve the team member experience because today team members are looking at multiple different systems to do their day-to-day -day and also improve the dealer experience, right? So what we built is a small, I mean, we, we built multiple different products. These, all these products uh, work together, but one such product is the, the demand forecasting inventory optimization engine. The other product is um, scheduling optimi optimization engine where 
you take the demand signals that come from the demand optimization engine, combine that with the constraints that you get from the suppliers, plants, schedules, and do your sub demand supply matching to give a schedule for the production um, plans to manufacture those cars, right? So, so every step of the way, there are multiple AI models and there's Gen AI embedded in, in, in each of these products. This is great. You know, at the beginning in the lead in, I talked about, uh, you know, the grand purifier, right? We have vendor, we have customer, we have, have partner. So, moment okay, of truth. Phil, moment of truth. <laughs> this, is, this is the moment of truth coming. Yeah. You know, we've heard what Kartik said. Uh, we've heard uh, what Chris has talked about here. In the end, it is all about incomes, right? Uh, sorry, outcomes, and it's either, we're going to reduce cost, we're going to increase yeah, customer sat. Teams. Incomes are good. <laughs> incomes are good. Everybody we're going to we're going to drive yeah. revenue, yes. right? Um, so, based on what we what you laid yeah. out uh, here, what have your business outcomes been? Yeah. Should they cover their ears? Or? <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I can say for, before I even go into, uh, over some of the outcomes, first, you know, AWS and Deloitte been uh, great transformation partners, fantastic partners. Um, they really help to bring you know those accelerators. And those I was very excited to hear all of the different capabilities um, because we're, our transformation journey. We're in our third year yeah. now, and, and like any large initiative, you're going to have your challenges. But sure. uh, the way I would say you know AWS responds to those challenges that you know come either through the voice of the partner or the customer, and you know reward it or come back with capabilities like they announced this week is is fantastic, and I can already. Uh, think about how you know this this going to solve some of our uh, remaining challenges and help us innovate faster. But over to over to the impact, a few different things. Um, one is in customer satisfaction, right? Um, being able to anticipate the customer's needs and and what they're looking for and have that vehicle, you know that that is pure value that translates mm -hmm. into to margin. It, it translates also into customer retention, right? So if we don't have a, a vehicle that can suit their needs, you right. know, that's risking them going to another brand. So we very much, uh, you know, value the opportunity to service and serve the customer uh, in that way. I would say the other big impact, again, is uh, Chris mentioned, touched on a little bit earlier, is internally to the enterprise. And the way we've uh, really kind of uh, transform transformed our data platform and uh, democratized that data uh, in the different ways, and either through purpose-built applications that we've uh, just, you know, we're coming off of mainframe and these old legacy systems and there's people that have these codes ingrained in their <laughs> mind. But, you know, for especially for a newer generation, uh, being able to go to a modern uh, interface and have these data without having to become, you know, a, a mainframe expert or a super Excel workbook uh, yeah. maestro, you know, that's uplifting. And so that's also helping with our, uh, ret uh, you know, our, our inbound talent expects right. these type of tools. They want these type of tools. And so that's very, uh, very positive things for our workforce as well. So, no, we're definitely, we're definitely uh, feeling the positive impact of these, uh, these partnerships. Yeah. Whew. Oh, <laughs> I'm glad he answered it like that, Dan. Yeah, it's surprising, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, it seems that you're having a great, AWS reInvent, and it looks like uh, you know there's going to be a lot of opportunity to continue to innovate into the future. I want to just thank all three of you. You know, we really thank didn't you. mean it thank when you. we said yeah. uh, it's kind of uh, it's unique and rare to get all the perspectives in one place. Yeah. Glad we could do it here at reInvent. Glad you did it on the 6.5. Let's do it again sometime soon. Thanks, Thanks Dan. Thanks, Thanks, guys. To Happy to be here. All right. And thank you so much for tuning in, being part of our community. This is the 6.5. We are on the road at AWS reInvent 2024 in Las Vegas. Hit subscribe. Join us for all of our other coverage here at the event. But for this episode, it's time to say goodbye. See you all later.